The beauty of painting on black fabric is the striking contrast with your colorful painting showing up brilliantly against the rich black background. Many subjects look outstanding on black, especially flowers, lightning, and moonlit landscapes. The main drawback is you can feel the paint on the fabric. Silk scarves and ties dyed with silk dyes, resists, and salt are softer than paints, but it can be a more complex process. The advantage of painting rather than dyeing is that it's easy to make the fabric paint permanent simply by ironing. Dyes are usually set by steaming or soaking in dye set, so with neckties they may shrink unevenly and require re-sewing to get the tie to lay flat. These neopaque fabric paints by Jacquard are among the best for covering black fabric. In the U.S., paints, brushes, ties, and scarves can be ordered from Dharma Trading Company. This rose tie was a special order painted for a prom with just three colors to match this dress in blue, white, and magenta. I would have added green leaves behind the roses, but that wasn't in the color scheme. On black, the paint will soak in. So you need a very opaque fabric paint, and it will take at least two coats to cover the black. Since white is the most opaque of paints with the most pigment, it makes a great first coat as a base for other colors to show up vibrantly against the very black fabric. Fabric paints are usually acrylic, which will hide what you're painting over. So paint the background first, then the foreground. I'd suggest testing your design on a piece of scrap fabric before you start, because once you get paint on black fabric, it's difficult to remove. So plan your design carefully. Also, stir your paint well before you begin painting. These are somewhat simplified roses that are fairly easy to paint. The petals are roughly in concentric circles, larger around the outside, smaller in the middle, if you're painting fairly small roses like these, just paint as many petals as you can comfortably fit in the space that you have. Look carefully at photos of real roses and then adapt it to what is actually practical to do with a paintbrush. After blending colors with your brush, rinse or wipe it off with a paper towel or cloth before dipping it in pure color again or changing colors. After painting white here and blending it into the pink, I wipe off the brush before dipping it in the white to keep the white pure and maintain enough contrast. It's easier to paint fine detail if you have a small enough brush. So you may want a small nylon silk painting brush for painting the base color of each flower and an even smaller brush to paint the petals. As with most artwork, it doesn't have to be totally realistic as long as the impression it makes brings to mind to the viewer what you want to get across. With clothing accessories, colors are very important and the designs can oftentimes be simplified. For a light pink rose, start with white and add pink where the shadows are. Then blend each shadow outward, leaving a little bit of pure white for each petal. Light will hit the outer edges of each petal on a rose, and the deeper parts will be in the shadow, so each petal will be lighter around the outside edge and darker toward the base of the petal. Paint the lighter color for the outside edge of each petal while the base color is still wet, so you can blend it into the base color for a graduated effect. Once you have the effect you want, don't overwork it or you'll lose your contrast. Most rose petals are slightly wavy around the edges, as long as you make the petals concentric but somewhat random and blend each petal from light on the outside to darker toward the middle, it will clearly look like a rose. The shape of orchids and other flowers can be more complex, so you can print photos to make flowers the size that you want, and cut out stencils of a few flowers that have shapes that you like. After placing the cutout flower where you want it on the tie or scarf, fit the stencil over it, remove the cutout, and paint a coat of white through the stencil. Then remove the stencil and touch up the paint if necessary, 
as you want the flower shapes to be fairly accurate. An average tie is 16 to 18 inches below the knot, so measure to make sure your design is in the right place. Repeat the stenciling for all your flowers painted in white. Adding stems or leaves behind the flowers will make them more realistic, so paint your base coat in white for those too. We have the basic composition established now with flowers stenciled in and the stems painted in white fabric paint. The colors we'd paint on top now won't soak into the fabric and disappear, but will be vibrant against the black background. We'll paint the stems first, since they are behind the flowers. I didn't buy green paint, so I mixed green from yellow and blue. To preserve paints in a mixing tray until later, you can cover them with plastic wrap so they don't dry out. The Neopake paints come in 21 colors, but I only needed yellow, red, magenta, blue, and white, and you might want black, too. The paints mix well to create any other color you need. Jacquard also makes Lumiere metallic or pearlescent paints, and there are other brands as well. Just make sure you get a fabric paint that covers well if you're painting on black. They clean up with soap and water before they dry. Orchids bloom from the bottom up, so there will usually be some unopened buds at the top of the stem. Orchids usually bend over, but to fit the shape of the tie, I arrange them vertically. There's an incredible variety of orchids, and since these ties were for a wedding, I chose a design that would be immediately recognizable as an orchid that I could paint on seven ties in slightly different shades. Most orchids have three sepals in the back, which look like petals, and two petals in the front. For enough contrast to be able to see the petals, I painted the three sepals first in slightly darker colors, and then the two petals lighter. If you accidentally get paint on the outside of the line where you didn't intend to, the easiest thing to do is expand your flower a little bit to include it. The other option is to immediately dab it with a clean Q-tip, paper towel, or cloth with some water, being careful not to disturb the rest of your painting. To add a nice texture to the petals, use streaks of lighter or darker paint to emphasize the veins of the petal, and brush over them until they are blended just enough to look natural, but not so much that you lose your contrast. This takes some patience and practice. It adds more character to your flower than just solid colors. Other options are to do a smooth blend from one color to another, or to dab the paint with a brush or a sponge for a speckled pattern. Study photos of the type of flower you want to paint and figure out how to simplify it enough to get the effect that you want. The center of orchids can be too complex to accurately paint in detail, so I took some artistic license and simplified them enough that I could paint each one with a tiny brush and still have them look like an orchid. Painting on a black scarf is a little different in that there's only one layer of silk with no lining and you have a lot more space to work with. Although fabric paint stays flexible, it does add stiffness to the silk, so try to use as little paint as possible to get the effect you want. I generally prefer to dye scarves as the dye becomes a part of the fabric, leaving the whole scarf soft and silky but there are some things that you can do with paint that can't be done with dyes, and vice versa. This black silk scarf from Dharma Trading is 8 mum habitai, which is lighter weight than the 19 mum black satin used for ties. The paint soaks partially through to the backside, but it doesn't look very attractive, so it's best to flip the frame over and paint the backside as well. Because of that, instead of painting on white first, I just did two coats of the colors. Allow the fabric paint to air cure for 24 hours, then use a dry iron with a press cloth, and iron both sides at least 30 seconds to set the paint and make it dry cleanable and washable. The advantage of this 60-year-old iron is the bottom is completely flat with no holes, but a modern iron will do just fine set on no steam. 
With ties, how it looks is more important than how it feels, so paint works well, especially on black, because of the striking contrast. Feel free to comment or ask questions below. Click the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more silk painting videos.